tears aren't coming. The tears just aren't coming. Uh, just to be clear, it looks like he's dead or he is dead? It just looks like he's dead. He's got, like, blue paint on him or something. But he's going to be fine. What is wrong with you? Doctor! Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. It hasn't been, like, a really big news week, but it's been a very interesting news week. And probably the most interesting news that we got just came out yesterday. It turns out that NBC is getting into the comic book game. And they're starting up, they just started up an imprint called, I believe it's UCP Graphic, which is kind of an offshoot of, of some of other projects they're working with. They're going to start out with a comic by uh, Grant Morrison, obviously a huge name in the industry. It's going to be distributed through uh, Boom Studios. And here to talk with me about this is my good friend, Perch. All right, Perch, before we get your introductions here. Yeah. How many times do we have to be right about this stuff before people listen to us? We've been explaining that these franchises, these comic book franchises, are cornerstones for streaming services and platforms for movies and television, and that these big studios need these, need these properties, whether they make money or not, as a comic book. But no one ever wants to believe us. Like, oh, it's just this big hassle. And it's like, no, look at Netflix. Mark Millar, Miller World, Miller World. Look at HBO Max. You've got, you know, DC Comics. Look at look at Disney Plus, Big Cornerstone, Marvel Comics. And now NBC obviously wants to get in the game. It feels like maybe they're dipping their toe in the boom, uh, you know, uh, sandbox here. How many yeah. times can we be right about this, Perch? No, it's it's it just makes good business sense. I think um, you know, you know, and and this is the right way to do it. If the studio wants to commission original IPs, they want to test it at a really cheap price, uh, you know, simple market to get this stuff out there. It makes absolute financial sense for them to do it, regardless of uh, you know what you feel about the comic industry or where comics are going and all the rest. This is this is cheap product testing. It allows you to do a few things legally to establish some trademarks to get. Uh, your your properties online it's it's absolutely the way to go and and we've been talking about this i remember brett smith talking about this on your show with us it must have been like a year ago as this is a, a valid way for hollywood to look at properties and this is just one more example of that comic books are the cheapest proof of concept that you can really get in entertainment plus they have a fervent audience you know that they're going to come in there and the audience is somewhat rabid so you're going to get a ton of feedback whether it's good or it's bad. Those are the exact people that you want, and you'll know if that that character's popping. Is this story working? Where where what are what's lacking in all of this? Comic books are the perfect venue for it, and like it, like I said, it doesn't cost very much. Right, you get to carve out the IP at a much cheaper, much quicker rate. So I mean, you can you can option projects, and you can put some things in. You could get kind of everything taken care of legally. You can start to uh, test some different concepts. You can see what's going to work, what's going to not. It helps you assess your budget for what you're going to do for your show. Uh, it's just it's it's just smart on all levels. And I, and I think where is you know the, maybe the the less smart option we've seen creators talk about going indie and and they're going to sell off their options to Netflix. That's a much trickier gambit. They're there. They're trying to somehow gain the attention of a studio. And we've seen a number of creators fail at that. But this is different. This is a studio basically setting an imprint, putting some people in charge of it to manage IP. And in this case, with uh, NBC Universal, they're having Boom do the publishing. So they're not even taking any risks on entering in the business new from that perspective. They're, they're, they're relying on somebody who's already there, who knows the mechanics of printing the books. So they just get a farm IP. And that's that's what the name of the company could have been. It's just NBC IP farming. That's <laughs> it would have been uh, much more obvious. No, I do find the the choice of Boom interesting because if uh, not that they would, but but if someone from Hollywood came to came to me and they said, you know, Disney's obviously uh, spoken for, Marvel spoken for, uh, Image doesn't really uh, have the structure to to be bought out. What uh, publishers should we be looking at that kind of have the IPs? And have the brand awareness that that would be good purchases, you know, to get IP out and uh, and work with. And the two that that would just come right off the top of my head would be Boom and, and Dark Horse. Do you think this is um, them dipping their toe in the water for maybe a future acquisition of Boom, or do you think they're just going to continue partnering with them? I, no, I think it absolutely could. I think it, it leaves their options open. And in this case, NBC Universal is in the driver's seat. So if they like the relationship, the way it works kind of at arm's distance, we've seen this happen in comics before, um, even dating back to kind of Malibu way, way back in the day, um, you know, then then they can 
can keep it to that rate. It can continue to work. If they need to bring it in because it just makes sense to have it tighter, uh, they can do that too. But I think part of this announcement, you saw a bunch of uh, comments into not just print publishing, but digital and audiobooks and kind of all the other types of media as well. They're going to go, they're going to try and develop these properties and put them out as wide as possible on a bunch of different platforms. And I suspect that might get in the way of an acquisition because they view uh, print comics as just kind of one distribution outlet. The core of their business is developing these IPs. Uh, but it's a, it's a win for Boom. I mean, the, what what is also true is this gives Boom a ton of stability at a time when companies need it. And, you know, you can just look at kind of the stark difference between where Boom's at today and where IDW's at today. as just an example. And, you know, you've got, you've got one company who's got a new deal and some stability and some sense of future roadmap that they can do with NBC Universal, which is good news for them. You've got another that is saddled with a ton of debt and still trying to shop their comics to other places and do not have a big dance partner tightly married to them. Boom is really a, a great partner. If you had to go to an independent um, an independent publisher, obviously they, they do have licenses, Power Rangers and things like that. I, they have a few others. But they have a lot of IPs, but they work with a lot of good creators. And I think that's really what they bring to the table here. And Univers or NBC Universal picked a perfect partner. Like they're going to have access to some of these great creators. Obviously, James Tynion is working there right now. Kieran Gillen is w working with Boom Studios. Plenty of great uh, independent comic creators, great writers who have worked with Boom Studios. And they really have those contacts that NBC Universal is probably going to want access to. Obviously, NBC did say that they wanted to bring in fresh talent. But I think they'll also be looking to Boom to maybe identify some of those talent or maybe bring some of those more recognizable uh, creators to, to create some IP for them. Yeah, uh, no, absolutely. I mean, it is it is funny. I did get a chuckle of, uh, you know, they did make a point of saying we're going to bring in new, fresh, kind of exciting talent. And we're starting with Grant Morrison. Grant so. Morrison. <laughs> OK, but uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, there's a lot of creators that boom. Uh, Brian Azario is, is there. Um, they've got a lot of people um, who are you know, who are both new and kind of, uh, and I want to say old, but, you know, established in the industry. And Brian and, Hill's there. That's right. That's right. Brian Hill is there. I, you know, Joss Whedon has done some stuff. So I mean, there's a lot of crossover um, with, with Boom and um, and what they can do with Matt Knitt. It's, it's, it, it, I think the way we should look at this is, I mean, simply, you know, NBC Universal had some success with uh, being showrunners or kind of producing the Umbrella Academy uh, for Netflix. It was a good deal for them. Um, I think they look at that and say, we can you know, take a little bit more of that value chain, not share the, the revenue as much with others and, and develop these properties ourselves. We can do it on the cheap. Uh, every property that works well, when we move into a movie, Grant Morrison uh, makes a ton of sense because he's had success with, uh, I mean, a lot of properties getting kind of optioned and taken over and, and happy, even though I don't think we're getting a third season out of it, still was uh, considered a success uh, for, for him and for the studio that produced it. It was profitable. And, and so I think we're, we're going to see, I mean, it's just, it's a, it's smart business. That's, that's all there is to it. This is smart business. And the more you've got these kinds of plays going out, the more stable the comic business is. It takes it away from kind of the, you know, two, two pillars of power of Marvel and DC. And you get some other people who have some big names playing in the space. It's, it's, it's smart. I imagine NBC Universal can't be the only people that have thought about this idea, realize that, that comic books are a great medium for this. Obviously, Disney has noticed that. Warner Brothers has, has noticed that. Netflix has noticed that, you know, with their, mark, uh, their middle world and things like this. I expect to see some of these other big studios kind of dip their toe in as well and maybe see if they can start up some original IP, get them tested out on comic books. And I, that can only strengthen up and uh, solidify the, the industry you know, with an infusion of cash, it's not like Boom is going to have to do a lot of work for this. They're just going to have to go and publish the work. NBC Universal is kind of doing all the work. I guess it's uh, UCP Graphic, mm -hmm. and uh, just a just a great deal for them. Now, I am interested in this. I don't know if you have the details. I, I was doing some some um, some research. Is there is there a comic book person, or is this strictly being run by by somebody from the studio? No, to date, it's somebody from the studio. We, we, we expect that there's some management, some of the roles are going to be put in place here. We haven't heard it yet, or if, it, if it's come out, it hasn't been released um, that I've seen. Um, so there will be somebody undoubtedly there. But to date, there are Hollywood people, there are uh, showrunner people, there are people who are used to kind of maximizing properties. So not names we've heard of in the comic industry, but I, I, I'm, I'm very confident in the next three months or maybe less, we're going to see somebody pop up there who's going to be a an editor-in-chief or some kind of creative officer there.
I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure of it. And then we'll, we'll see what happens then. So let's talk a little bit about the, the comic that they're coming out with, which is, I would consider a, a proof of concept from Grant Morrison and Alex Child. I guess they're going to co-write it. So I'd imagine Morrison's probably going to be doing this, the, the storyboard and then Child will probably be doing like the scripting. Uh -huh. And it's going to be a, a five issue uh, miniseries called uh, Protector Valley Road. And I guess it's based on the story of a group of teenage girls suspected in the disappearance of several boys in 1964, California beach town. I guess this is somewhat based off of like an urban legend in, in that area. That's an actual road. Uh, what do you think? Is this a good idea? Does this, this seem like it's, it's just being uh, created to, to see if it's ready for streaming or, or do you think they're, they're actually just looking at it as a comic book property? No, I mean, I, no, I think it definitely is, is being planned as a streaming show. I mean, it, it fits, it fits a very simple, easy entry, uh, show, uh, or, or movie of, you know, they, there's some, we have four protagonists, we have four, four girls and they're off in kind of a rural area and boys disappear and there may be something, some supernatural shenanigans going on and they have to figure it out to kind of clear their name. I mean, it, it feels like a movie plot, uh, rendered as a comic. And I, I think that's, that's what we will get. We'll get a, kind of offbeat, kind of crazy action, uh, some some weird horror from Grant Morrison, and it's just, it, it fits. It, it fits his style, it fits what, you know, a lot of movies can be made. It's not unlike, uh, you know, some of the, I mean, even Lock and Key and shows like that, where there's something going on, we've got to figure out what it is. So, so I mean, I, I definitely think they're eyeing this as something to take to screen as a first proof of concept. I think that's why they go out the gate as well with somebody like Grant Morrison because he's done that several times and they they know there's a, a track record there. So, uh, no, it's it's a very when I read that it, it felt like a very safe outing, uh, a very safe you know make a comic something for the CW. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's what it kind of hit me. But I imagine this is being planned, you know. For their Peacock streaming service, which I think is already launched, obviously they've done some production for Netflix and other things like this. But I imagine this is all with an eye towards Peacock and boosting up, uh, you know, some of the the new material that they that they need on there. Because right now uh, they're they're kind of banking a lot on some old NBC properties being being popular on streaming. I don't think they have probably have enough of that, so they're definitely going to have to invest fully in in new materials like Netflix, HBO Max, Disney Plus are doing. And uh, I think this is a great start. And uh, I hope that that this is a success and they're able to, to partner with Boom and, and continue doing this. Because for me, this is great news. And it, you know, it, it does, obviously it feels good for me and probably for you that it does vindicate a lot of the, a lot of our um, opinions that we've been giving on why the comic book industry uh, isn't dying, why Warner Brothers isn't about to sell DC, why uh -huh. Disney isn't ready to sell Marvel, because they need these properties. These are cornerstone properties for these streaming services. And obviously for movies, uh, when you talked about Warner Brothers and, and Disney, you need these if you want to have a successful pl uh, streaming platform. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Netflix has proven it. Disney Plus is about to prove it. HBO Max. Interesting enough, Amazon Prime doesn't really have this, although they do have some like Ed Rubaker material like that. So I'd imagine they might be the next big streaming service to kind of go out there and, and try and acquire a platform. Yeah, I mean, Amazon has the Comixology originals and, and some of what they've done there, but it just it hasn't felt like a priority for them. I think they're last to the table to really kind of put some investment there. But uh, I mean, they, you're right; it's coming. I think they'll they'll grow that platform. They'll put some more money into it, and, and uh, they'll they'll try and push that way. No, I mean, this is I, I do think it's good news. You have to be very kind of myopic to not see this as as good news because it's another avenue for comics to get made, and that's good news. Now, I may not like a single one of the comics that actually comes out. That's quite possible, but uh, you know the the option, more avenues for comics to be produced, more places where uh, you know creative ideas can can happen, more diversification of the talent. Meaning you've got different, you know, you don't have to kind of suck up to one management team in order to make it comics. You've got multiple options. That's going to be healthier for the industry. It's going to break up a lot of what we've been seeing over the last month, frankly, of kind of networks and and that kind of stuff. It's it's harder for an outside mob to control you know, eight or 10 different companies as opposed to two. It's just, it, it, these, this, all these things are positive. Again, may, these, not a single good comic may come out of this, but the ability for comics to come out of this role is smart. And, and also I, I'm with you, it, it does indicate a little bit the, uh, you know, it's just smart business. 
And, and, and for, for, for a cost investment, it's just smart to put these things out, to be able to play in this space, to be able to advertise something as there's a graphic novel out there to double dip on the revenue. It's, it's just smart. And again, I'm remembering it had to be about a year ago. Uh, we were on a panel. You had Brett Smith on your show. And we were talking about this exact concept that Hollywood was looking at this because it was smart business. And I mean, it does fly in the face of, of the people who are like, well, the comic industry is completely dying. It's going to be in ashes in the next uh, year or two. It, there's just th that doesn't make any sense. It's far riskier to blow this stuff all up and then just try and you know spend $20 million developing a movie property with no real idea if it's going to run or not. That, that makes no sense. So anyway, it's an interesting to see this player in the mix and uh, hopefully we'll see some good things out of them. Yep. I'm with you, man. I do expect that NBC Universal will probably be putting some unproven talents that maybe they don't uh, feel comfortable with putting on a, on a scripted television show yet. Throw them over into comics where it's a much uh, cheaper uh, platform. Go prove yourself. And hopefully we'll get some good comic writers out of this and some cool stuff. Uh, of course, it might not even happen. Who knows? But it's, but it's good for the business. It is good for the business. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews, and don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.